So, my name is Andreas Martin Lööf and uh, I'm an architect based in Stockholm and I run this architect practice since 10 years, a little bit more than 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, today we have grown to a medium-sized company, we're about 30 people in the studio and we are doing everything from what I dreamt of when I was a child, like furniture design to, to big uh, residential schemes and now, nowadays even boat designs and, uh, and so uh, many different things. Basically uh, we do uh, things that we think make sense and is fun. I have always been very dedicated to, to, to architecture and design and uh, when you meet people and you have that kind of uh, then pe when people feel that you are dedicated to what you do then it gets uh, then people get interested to work with you and so it's uh, I think the, the success is partly that dedication and of course also after a while that, that we show that we also can deliver projects. Uh, uh, this studio is very special because almost all the projects we take on also uh, uh, are realized in a building, in a product or, or in, a, in a design. Uh, that's a little bit different from many, many design studios that work a lot on competitions and proposals that sometimes never are uh, realized. Uh, but we are working um, quite... Uh, hands-on and uh, often with reality. <laughs> you learn quick when you're dealing with things that actually uh, are realized because then you learn from, from the process of making things, making products, making buildings. I started very small, like uh, a friend came and asked, can you do my kitchen? Can you do a little attic conversion? And uh, uh, so um, basically, uh, uh, you get requests and, and then you respond to it. And uh, if you deliver on a good level and learn to know more people, then 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 the the, the commissions will will come to you. I think that's my feeling. I know it sounds maybe a bit too too uh, too easy, but but that has been. The, the, that is the fact here, <laughs> that is how it is here. So uh, I've not made so much um, kind of promotion, uh, it's more that I answer the phone when people call and ask if you want to do things. So for example, the, the why I uh, started a, a section of the studio only working with luxury residential was because I learned to know developers within that field and later on I got this uh, request if I could do modular housing and uh, first we actually said no because we were so busy but then I, I woke up uh, that night after saying no and felt like oh this was not the right decision and I called them back next day and said let's, let's try to do modular housing uh, and then uh, later on it became one of the biggest part, uh, biggest uh, kind of, uh, it's, it was maybe that thing that made us a little bit more well known outside Sweden and, and also it has contributed a lot to the growth of the office to, to not only do one thing but to do many things. I was a little bit skeptic to the system of building with modules uh, just like totally furnished and finished modules because it's a kind of utopia. Uh, it has been done, it, many architects have tested and it's a kind of, I think the history of uh, fully furnished modular uh, units, uh, you can see examples from the 70s, from the 60s, from uh, like also earlier and uh, quite often it only happened once. You make one building and then you realize that, oh, this was not the way to do it. And then you're back on, on more traditional construction methods. So, so I, I actually told first this young company the history of the history of modular housing and, uh, and also said that this, this might not be easy. Like it's uh, to develop a, f a system 
that actually works in reality in Sweden that is also a coal country uh, with insulation problems between the units and, and, uh, and uh, coal structures instead of warm structures etc. It, it will be uh, a journey and then we took on that journey and then we made one project in, uh, in a little uh, uh, village between Stockholm and Uppsala uh, and, um, and the architecture of that project was quite uh, striking, it was a strong expression uh, and then um, still many problems but a strong expression uh, and then uh, a project leader at Sweden's biggest public housing company, Svenska Bostäder, saw that project and uh, thought about that they have had a long, um, they have had a long collaboration with a youth organization called Jag vill ha bostad punkt nu. It's like a kind of youth organization that works for more rental, uh, cheap rental apartments for young people in Stockholm. Um, and they thought about, uh, she thought about if I combine uh, Andreas Architecture, Junior Living and this youth organization and the money from Sweden's biggest public land, maybe we can achieve something. And, and then we actually found a good uh, uh, kind of use of these modular systems because uh, we could build on, on temporary building plots, we could build fast. We could be built with quite high quality and then uh, so now we have actually built almost 700 of these apartments in Stockholm. So it has taken a little bit of time but, but I think uh, modular housing uh, it's, it's like uh, quite common uh, but often you hide all the connections so it looks like any building but the system, the thing, the, the little bit striking thing, thing, thing with, uh, with my design is that you can really see that it's a uh, uh, carefully designed uh, temporary building or modular building or, or depending on the use. I think uh, like I'm kind of past the, the period of my life when I worked too much uh, so uh, uh, one kind of uh, uh, thing I thought about when I moved closer to my work again, like now living in the same building as the office, uh, was that uh, I need to be able to to uh, to associate work with with good good everyday feelings, like uh, not feeling the stress or overwork, uh, and um, so and I think I quite succeeded with that, uh, and then then I don't associate work with bad things. I associate it with fun things. Uh, it's still an uh, uh, intense situation of course running a big architect office uh, but, uh, uh, but it's manageable and then, then I think it's a lot of benefits of being in the same building also. For example you can start, uh, start in the morning with a t-shirt in a Teams conference and then uh, realize that after lunch you have to, to, to have something else, wear something else and go to a meeting and then that, that is fixed in two minutes and, and now when I also have my dog I can feed the dog between the meetings and so it's actually a quite uh, nice solution and it's the, the interesting thing is that uh, so many people are questioning it especially Swedes I think and it might have to do with that we were actually uh, you know in, in the 1950s we developed the thing called ABC cities like uh, 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 work uh, uh, center and living in the same you do you work somewhere and then you take the subway to somewhere else and then you go shopping here you know the modernistic idea of, of life and actually I just follow the, the much much older uh, idea of, of the medieval city or something where, where if you're if you're making shoes you're living a, a lot uh, on top of your shoemaking place, if you're a baker, you live on top of your oven, whatever, uh, and actually people have lived like that for thousands and thousands of years and it's much more logical than, than the modernistic uh, separation of, of things. So, so I don't care so much actually, I just try to make the best out of the situation. One reason that I might have 
had an impact is that my mother put me in a Steiner Schule, uh, so I had a lot of creative training when I was a child, and I think it uh, pushed me a little bit into uh, 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 a profession like this. And and I love the fact that architecture is uh, it's a kind of uh, 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 technical artistic profession. It, it's just in between. Uh, uh, questions about society, questions about technique, construction, and also a lot of, of uh, creativity and uh, uh, actually like more uh, fine art skills even like how, how, how do we make how do we create beauty for people uh, so they can enjoy uh, uh, enjoy the surroundings uh, or their every, their everyday environment? I think it's an extremely important question about how. How beauty can give people joy in life. With Stockholm, I think um, I have lived in Stockholm for uh, the whole of my life, like uh, since I was a child, and uh, and also like in Sweden. And of course, uh, uh, people are talking a lot about Scandinavian design, uh, and I think uh, the the culture and the environment uh, that surrounds you are of course extremely important for the. Uh, development of, of uh, what you think, uh, how you develop your architecture, how you develop your design. Even if I'm a little bit against this uh, uh, picture of what Scandinavian design is, because I think it can be many different things, but, but of course my design would look different if I lived on the other side of the world, uh, I'm quite sure. So I started to think about building my own house and I was really thinking about uh, making it uh, my own place for uh, enjoying small vacations etc. Uh, a, a little retreat outside the city and I was, never, uh, I was never aware of that it would create so much attention afterwards. Uh, uh, but what I did there was that I, I uh, I think I also found during the construction of my summer art a little bit what my work method uh, is about uh, because it's a lot of um, sampling and tweaking of details that were already in the old house and it also so I actually understood my method with renovating old buildings and, and kind of rather kind of bridge uh, between old and new rather than make a clear cut. It, I think this kind of um, silent conversation between what's old and, and what you add is maybe more important than showing a very clear like this is old and this is my my new thing here, my new, uh, my new uh, design. I think um, that kind of connection is, 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 is very important. So I started to work with that carefully. I had a very limited budget also budget so, I built the house together with two two craftsmen uh, and and uh, and one carpenter carpentry uh, and uh, and but it was very precise almost precise like like a piece of furniture but but the building um, and afterwards uh, um, it became became quite yeah strikingly beautiful <laughs> so then it landed on all covers uh, of the design magazines around the world. And also helped uh, helped the office to grow and helped uh, helped to build up a, a, a brand within architecture. I learned quite much by being so close to the project. Normally, when you design, you design on your table and then you give it away to a contractor, etc., etc. And and actually, you're quite quite far away as from where it happens. Uh, but, but I try to always be very close to where things happen and, and that helps me a lot to, to make uh, uh, more interesting and more beautiful designs. If it's something I, I, I'm working on uh, changing is, is where we have landed today uh, in, uh, in the kind of uh, in, within the construction industry. I think it's extremely, um, uh, for example, separated between design, uh, cost calculations and construction and then all of a sudden you end up in very 
standardized solutions uh, where, where uh, creativity is really cut on in every stage. I want to kind of re-establish uh, integrity into the field of construction. I think uh, we have so many hundreds of years of, of uh, different types of skilled manufacturing of buildings uh, and I can't see why it should be impossible today. Uh, but you can see many examples of that, that, that uh, architecture is at uh, is, is at the risk today, like it's put aside, people are too, it's a little bit too technocratic, the society. I don't know if you have the same thing in, in Germany, but, but here in, in Sweden I think you see many quite bad examples of uh, what today's construction industry achieve. For me change is all about uh, questioning uh, the process of making a building uh, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, show good examples that you can land on more interesting solutions with the same budget. Uh, and, and, uh, and, but you need to, to be kind of stubborn and, and really understand what's possible within uh, the process of making a building. I don't really believe in dream projects. These questions, this quest, question come up, comes up quite often. <laughs> uh, I definitely be, believe in dream clients, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, and they are always uh, interested, uh, uh, engaged in the process, uh, and uh, and uh, um, they come here with uh, with a kind of interesting uh, project or interesting idea that they want to develop. Uh, so I'm very interested in that. And then uh, whether it's a chair, a spoon, a light fixture or a big building, uh, it does not matter so much to me. Recently I have been uh, designing a church, the Catholic church in, in, in the city centre. And um, I actually uh, realised that, that um, you know, church building has always been one of the most important buildings, like in any religion, you know, when you build for the church, you build something of high quality that will last long. And I realized that um, that the collaboration uh, uh, with the client there was really interesting because they were very engaged in in uh, in the project, and uh, and we created something beautiful together. And um, and the focus was totally different from, uh, for example, when you do a luxury condo, because uh, uh, the the kind of the process and also what we, we what we tried to achieve was a very different product than than a, than a housing project. For me, that was a little bit also a dream to to step out of that field that I have been so involved in for. 10-15 years with, with residential projects and, and step into a totally different field where, where actually the kind of just uh, experience of space uh, was extremely important and, and uh, experience of even experience of like a spiritual space uh, and that we could talk about that okay this is not good enough because it's not beautiful enough or it's not airy enough or but Meanwhile, when you talk uh, uh, about architecture with a developer, we would look at the costs and see, do we have something on the last line here? Uh, do we earn money? Can we sell this? You know, questions can be so different depending on the project. And of course, the more the project um, engage uh, with the kind of core of architecture, the more interesting it gets. Um, legacy uh, would then be to, to be part of a process where we re-establish a bit of integrity into this business. Like, because buildings are meant to be long-lasting, it's also part of, of the more and more focus towards environmentally friendly things. I rather look at the longevity than if that material or that material is better than the other. I think if we can keep the building there for a long time, uh, then it's then it's uh, kind of much more environmentally friendly than uh, than uh, uh, than kind of 
demolish it after a couple of years. And if you have that ambition, then you need to be uh, very focused on uh, the flexibility of the building, uh, the program of the building, but also the beauty, so people kind of appreciate it for a long time. Uh, and <clears throat> not least the, the, the craftsmanship when you make the building, that uh, you need to think about all the details, the hinges, the handles, uh, the eave details, uh, the facade materials, the patina, how it ages, and um, all those things. I think uh, 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 is put. Uh, it's like many of those questions is a little bit put aside today by by very um, kind of standardized schemes where 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 uh, developers want to only earn as much money as possible, like risk capital. Uh, you can see that that uh, the whole business of construction and architecture is uh, sometimes uh, um, um, it's too close to just uh, normal business. But uh, when you build buildings, it has to be also hard and, 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 uh, and, and good thoughts put into the process that does not only have to do with the economy, uh, that also has to do with other things. So I think um, to, to, if I can contribute with a little bit, uh, it doesn't have to be much, but a few buildings over, the, uh, over, over my lifetime that, that uh, are good examples of that, then I would be happy. Okay. Yours.